Hey guys, if you're a fan of English football and have been for a while, then you should be familiar with the king of long throw-ins, Rory Delap. Uh, if you aren't aware, he played for Stoke City, and when his team won a throw-in pretty much anywhere in the opposition third, they'd give him the ball and he'd be able to throw it in or around the six-yard box. So, how far is that? I found footage of one of his throws and measured it out on Google Maps at 40.4 metres. More recently, other clubs have been synonymous with throw-ins. Uh, in 2018, Liverpool hired a specialist throw-in coach called Thomas Grunemark, and he's still working with them four years later. While he is the former world record holder, it's not just distance that he coaches. However, that is the focus of this video. So I wanted to see how much I could improve my own throw-ins and how close to Rory Delap I could get. Thomas Grunemark says that during his professional coaching, he tends to see players improve by between 5 and 15 metres. So first I tested my baseline and after 10 throws, I had a best of 18.2 metres. That doesn't sound very far at all, so I wanted to find some other throws to compare it to. Hashtag United did a video on long throw-ins. Thomas Grunemark also shared some numbers on his Instagram from players he's coached, including Andy Robertson. That didn't make me feel any better at all. The worst throw in by Hashtag United was 19 metres and most of them were between 25 and 30. Uh, Thomas himself managed over 50 metres, but that is using the flip throw technique. So my throw ins are basically terrible uh, and I can't see why they should be. I quite feel like I'm quite powerful upper body wise. I can do clap push ups, I can bench over 100 kilos, but if you put my throw in next to Rory Delaps, it's not even halfway. Thomas has a YouTube page with some great tips on how to improve your throwing distance and I implemented those as part of my training. Each session I did 10 max effort throws and made changes to my hand position, also tried to apply backspin to the ball as I released it. I don't want to scare you too much with a graph, but here's a box plot. The edges of the box represent my third and seventh best throws and the lines extend out to my best and worst efforts. It's easier to switch to something called a swarm plot, showing each individual throw to talk about lesson one, which is to dry the ball. I didn't take this seriously at first, but all of these throws around 16 meters or less were because I didn't dry the ball enough. If you're in a game and you dry the ball with your shirt, fair enough, but if you're just practicing throw-ins and it's wet grass, then bring a towel. There's a reason the professional teams have them on the sidelines, it does make a difference. For the first three weeks, all I did was throw. I also looked up a proper upper body warm-up uh, used by javelin and discus throwers because they know what it takes to prepare your body to throw something a long way. My best effort improved to 19.6 meters. After that, I started introducing medicine ball work and some ab exercises to strengthen my core. By week six, I'd managed to throw a best of 21 meters, which I hit three sessions in a row. I added in another exercise recommended by Thomas, which is a weighted throw. I did that by filling a football with water until it weighed about a kilo, which is about twice a regular ball. Another tip from Thomas was to practice releasing the ball with backspin while aiming at a target, ideally a football crossbar. Because I didn't want to go and pick up the ball each time, I used a basketball backboard at my local park. Three weeks later, no real upward trend, but a personal best of 21.4 metres. In hindsight, I should have stopped there because the next three months were a whole lot of nothing. I adapted some online training sessions that were meant for javelin throwers, which was Rory Delap's other sport as a teenager, adding in things like skull crushers, pull-ups, dumbbell pullovers, and bench press. Even though the rep ranges changed to emphasize power, my throws didn't really improve. After three months of lifting weights like a javelin thrower, my throws were pretty much the same, and my best throw moved a whole 40 centimeters to 21.8 meters. So in summary, what worked for me was practicing my technique, doing a thorough warm up, fixing my hand position, doing some core exercises and thoroughly drying the ball. On the last point, if you are looking to practice your throws, you're better off doing it in the summer when the grass is dry. I started my training in October last year in the UK and that was probably the biggest mistake I made. In terms of what didn't work, basically any upper body training, even if it's geared at improving power. Uh, that is something that Thomas actually said in his own videos. He said that most of the 5 to 15 metres comes from an improvement in technique, but I was stubborn enough to think that weights were the solution. Yes, if you're 14 and not very strong, then weights will probably help, but not if you've already got a good baseline level of strength. One final thing that worked for me was a longer run-up. For all the efforts up to this point, I'd restricted myself to a four-step run-up, because sometimes that's all the space you have at the side of the pitch. 
With a five meter run up, I had a best of 23 meters. With a 10 meter run up, I got another half a meter. At 23 and a half meters, that means I'd land just shy of the edge of the six yard box, and it gives me an improvement of just over five meters. So if you do find yourself with the space to do a six or seven step run up, then that's a good extra tip. Otherwise, warm up thoroughly, make sure it's a dry ball, focus on that hand position and general technique. If you want to see a throw in masterclass, I suggest finding a Rory Delap highlight reel. Thanks for watching.